Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Chairman of the Presidential Leadership Council of Yemen, Dr Rashid Mohammed Al Alimi, on his country's Unity Day. His Majesty the King wished Dr Al Alimi abundant health and happiness and for the people of Yemen further progress, prosperity and perpetual security and stability. The National Guard Commander, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, received Pakistan's Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee, the JCSCC, General Sahir Shamshad Mirza, and his accompanying delegation, currently on an official visit to Bahrain in the presence of the Director of National Guard Staff, Lieutenant General Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Saud Al Khalifa, the Director of the Office of His Highness the Commander of the National Guard, Major General Abdurrahman Rashid Al Saad. The Commander of the Special Operations Unit, Lieutenant Colonel Hassan Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, and the Charged Affairs of the Embassy of Pakistan to Bahrain, Mohammed Ali Safar. On arrival, the National Guard Commander, the Director of the National Guard Staff, and the Commander of the Special Operations Unit were at the forefront to receive General Mirza. An official reception ceremony was held, and the national anthems of both Bahrain and Pakistan were played. His Highness and the guest inspected the guards of honour. His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed noted the importance of exchanging visits in enhancing and developing military relations between Bahrain and Pakistan. The meeting reviewed topics of common interest and reviewed the cooperation in all fields, especially the military one. The National Guard commander praised the Pakistani army's role in supporting regional and global security and the stability. The JCSCC chairman was briefed on the role, strategies and duties carried out by the National Guard. He also paid a visit to the National Guard Museum for Old Weapons, where he wrote a note in the VIP visitor book. He expressed gratitude to His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed for his interest in advancing the cooperation between the National Guard and the Pakistani Army.
Arab, GCC and international media outlets have focused on the keynote speech delivered by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa at the 32nd Arab Summit which was held in the Saudi city of Jeddah. While addressing the Pan-Arab Summit, His Majesty the King stressed the need to preserve the legitimate rights of Egypt and Sudan in the waters of the Nile River, affirming Bahrain's principal stance towards this issue and firm approach in supporting just causes and the Arab and Islamic nations. In this regard, the Cairo-based Al Haram newspaper highlighted His Majesty the King's assertion of Egypt's historical right to the Nile River waters and support for the Palestinian cause through His Majesty's call for carrying on the peace process in a way that would lead to the establishment of an independent Palestinian state according to the two-state solution. The al Yom El Saba newspaper highlighted His Majesty's call for protecting the legitimate Arab rights and enhancing inter-Arab reconciliation to carry on achieving the goals of joint Arab action in a way that would optimise common gains at all levels. The website of al Qahira News TV also shed light on His Majesty the King's call for achieving Arab integration, welcoming the ongoing Arab efforts to establish a balanced regional order and the return of Syria to the Arab League, as well as confirmation of the Egypt's Nile River water rides. Saudi al Yom newspaper also covered the royal speech. It focused on His Majesty the King's confirmation of Egypt's water rights and the call for stepping up Arab action with more determination and solidarity to establish stability and harmony that Arab peoples must enjoy. Russia Today, the international news website, analysed the speech from various dimensions, highlighting His Majesty's stances, calling for ending wars, achieving peace and reinstating security and peace so that the world regains its economic and environmental recovery. The Al Arab Al Yam news website focused on His Majesty the King's call for strengthening the pillars of joint Arab action in light of efforts to form a new balanced regional order, as reflected in the resumption of the Saudi-Iranian diplomatic relations the continuity of the humanitarian truce in Yemen and the return of Syria to the Arab League. Other Arab media outlets and news websites also dealt with the royal speech from various angles given the comprehensive visions it contained and the various conditions of the Arab region and the solutions and initiatives it presented in order to strengthen the joint Arab action and solidarity to consolidate peace, stability and prosperity for Arab peoples. They indicated His Majesty's announcement of the Kingdom's hosting of the 33rd Arab Summit embodies the royal strong belief in the importance of consolidating Arab joint action towards more cooperation and complementarity for the best interests of the Arab world. The Kingdom of Bahrain achieved a new world record in the Guinness World Records in the field of medicine. The event was held under the patronage of the National Security Advisor, Secretary General of the Supreme Defence Council and Royal Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Kingdom broke the record for the 12-hour hearing test registered in the Guinness World Records. His Highness Sheikh Nas delegated the Deputy Commander of the Royal Guard, Major General Hamad Khalifa Al Nuemi, to attend the announcement ceremony and receive the official certificate of accreditation from the official referee from the Guinness Book of Records. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that the achievement is a source of pride for all and is supported by His Majesty the King, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, and encouragement of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, and the follow-up of BDF Commander-in-Chief. He affirmed that the Kingdom will continue to seek such achievements that will highlight Bahrain's position in various fields, especially in medicine, locally, regionally and internationally. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that this achievement has added to the BDF and Royal Guard's tremendous record, adding that these national accomplishments represent a footprint in history for future generations and are a testament to the patriotic efforts and progress and prosperity of the country. Regarding the Hear the World event, the ENT surgeon at King Hamad University Hospital, Dr Ahmed Khaled Hassan, noted that Bahrain broke the Guinness World Record for hearing tests using the latest innovative medical technologies in the field of hearing, adding that this global achievement is only an affirmation of Bahrain's keenness to keep pace with technological development in the field of medicine and to raise awareness on hearing problems and prevention in early diagnosis.
uh, this is the first time that I adjudicate an attempt in Bahrain. Uh, I arrived here at uh, before 8 a.m. this morning to check that the record is going well. This is a 12-hour record, which means it's going from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, this is one of the most organized events, mass participation events I've ever been on, so well done to the organizers. We, as Guinness World Records, we encourage everyone and anyone and all companies and all organizations and individuals to always come and try to attempt new Guinness World Records attempts. So to answer your questions, of course, Bahrain and also all the other countries and all the other organizations, we always encourage people to come and attempt new Guinness World Records titles. The Shura Council held its weekly session presided over by its chairman Ali Al Saleh. The council approved two draft laws ratifying the agreement between Bahrain and Japan for the exchange, encouragement and protection of investment in line with the government's efforts to strengthen relations with other countries in the financial and economic fields and provide an appropriate environment to attract direct foreign investments. It also approved a draft law to cancel Article 353 of the Penal Code, which aims to ensure the protection approved by the Fourth Geneva Convention for women in particular against rape and eliminate the motives and causes of the crime. The President of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, the SLRB, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah bin Hamid Al Khalifa, stressed the importance of partnership between the public and private sectors in supporting national development goals. He hailed the private sector as a vital and active partner in creating rewarding opportunities for citizens and supporting development pathways in line with the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King and the government's plans and programmes led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He underlined the SLRB's pivotal role in supporting Bahrain's urban development and expanding the required infrastructures for various sectors. The executive and legislative authorities continue their joint meetings to discuss the draft law approving the state's general budget for the fiscal years 2023 to 2024. The draft law approving the state's general budget is based on maintaining financial and sustainable stability, creating promising opportunities for citizens, adhering to the financial balance programme, as well as continuing to improve the efficiency of government service and develop performance. The two executive authorities are keen to reach consensus on the state's general budget, which will be reflected on the paths of development in the Kingdom. Bahrain is keen to continue implementing the priorities and programmes of the Economic Recovery Plan and adopting initiatives to achieve the goals of the Fiscal Balance Programme. Based on the invitation received by His Majesty the King from the President of the 77th Session of the UN General Assembly, Jabba Karoshi, and an implementation of the mandate of the Cabinet and the Directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Bahrain's Ambassador to the US, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, participated in the high-level meeting for the mid-term review of the implementation of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, which was held in cooperation with the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction. During the meeting, the ambassador delivered the speech of Bahrain, in which he affirmed that Bahrain, thanks to the royal directors of His Majesty the King and the efforts of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, continues to achieve its development aspirations through the development of a national strategy for disaster risk reduction, in line with the Sendai framework and the risk analysis and management mechanism, according to the procedures approved by the UN. The ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation for the sincere efforts made by the UN to enhance international cooperation and for the benefit of all people. He pointed out that the Kingdom, in response to the efforts of the international organisation to establish the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, has established the Civil Defence Council, which supervises the development of policies that ensure effective response when disasters or emergencies and crises occur. The ambassador noted that 78% of these goals have been included in the government's work programme and the relevant ministries and authorities have been included them in their various plans and programmes. He added that all government sectors in the Kingdom participated in developing the necessary preventative plans and conducting joint national exercises in partnership with the private sector institutions and civil society, pointing out that work is underway to establish a national platform to spread awareness and consolidate the principle of community partnership to reduce the risks of emergencies and disasters. He said that achieving the goals of the Sendai framework requires collective effort and international commitment to partnership and constructive cooperation and called for the establishment of an effective international emergency system. 
He referred to the importance of establishing national bodies or centres to supervise the achievement of the Sendai framework goals and establishing regional offices to set up the required mechanisms for follow-up, coordination and training to support developing countries most in need of assistance. In implementation of the directives to the leadership, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced that the Kingdom of Bahrain has decided to resume diplomatic representation at the level of ambassadors with Lebanon. The decision comes to strengthen the brotherly relations between the two countries and their people and provide mutual respect in accordance with the principles of the Charter of the League of Arab States and the provisions of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations of 1961. The Kingdom of Bahrain strongly condemns the storming and ransacking of the Qatari embassy in Khartoum by an armed group. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said in a statement that the act represents a serious violation of international covenants and norms that criminalise assaulting the sanctity of diplomatic buildings and missions. The Ministry reiterated Bahrain's unequivocal stance, urging an end to acts of violence and vandalism in Sudan. He stressed the need to provide full protection for the headquarters of diplomatic missions and civilian facilities and track down and punish the perpetrators of the attack. It called on Sudanese parties to avoid escalation, heed the country's national interests and engage in peaceful dialogue and negotiations to settle the current crisis in a way that meets the aspirations of the Sudanese people for security, peace and prosperity. The RCSI Medical University of Bahrain inaugurated its solar project in the presence of the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yas bin Ibrahim Humaydan, and Deputy Chairperson of the Higher Education Council Board of Trustees, Dr. Sheikh Arana bin Isa bin Doaj Al Khalifa Humaydan, praised the university's move towards renewable energy by investing in the solar energy project. He emphasised the importance of moving towards implementing more renewable energy projects and moving away from traditional energy sources. The inauguration event was led by Managing Director of RCSI Bahrain, Stephen Harrison Murfield, who highlighted the importance of this project and added that thanks to this renewable energy source, RCSI is reducing the carbon footprint by 2,247 metric tonnes per year. For his part, President of RCSI, Professor Samir Atum, extended congratulations and thanks to the Head of Estates and Support Services, Harrison Murfield, for their efforts and all those parties who have contributed to the execution of this project. The event was the finale, I suppose, the, the, the cherry on the top of the cake for uh, the implementation of the solar farm project to RCSI Bahrain. Um, the solar project has taken nine months to implement. Um, it covers 12,000 square metres of our campus here in Bahrain uh, and is made up of nearly 5,000 solar panels, um, giving us a total of 681 undercover car parking spaces, but the real winner is sustainability. So from a sustainability perspective, the implementation is a 2.72 megawatt implementation, generating 3.66 million kilowatt hours of electricity on an annual basis which just to give you some context means around 60 to 65% of our energy requirements will be met by the solar farm project. Um, it also gives us sustainability in terms of saving our carbon footprint. It reduces our carbon footprint by 2,247 tonnes per year, which is the equivalent of taking 927 cars off the roads on an annual basis. So we're incredibly proud of what we've achieved. Uh, we're incredibly proud of the sustainability, both from a financial perspective, uh, but more particularly from a climate change perspective.